to my talk. So today I'm going to talk about unavoidable stop tournaments in tournaments with large chromatin number. So this is going to work with uh, Maria Chudinovsky, uh, Eli Kim, and Paul Simmer. So I'm going to start with uh, definitions of tournaments and its chromatin number. So tournament is a uh, uh, oriented uh, is the just a digraph whose underlying graph is complete graph. So for every pair of vertices u and v, uh, you have only one exactly one edge from u to v or from v to u. So tournament is just a digraph. Underlying graph is complete. So, for example, this is a tournament, but if you remove one edge, then it is not a tournament because its underlying graph is just, uh, it's not a complete. So, uh, yeah, it's not a, it is not a tournament, and if you add one edge here, it is not a tournament there. Because yeah, each underlying graph is not simple. So it's not its underlying graph is not a complete graph. And the chromatic number of a tournament is the uh, minimum number of transitive sets with union the whole whole vertex set. So uh, we want to just uh, partition the vertex set into the minimum number of uh, transitive sets. Uh, uh, yeah. Chromatic number of T is the mean number for a transitive set. with union V, T. Yeah, so in this talk, I want to talk about which tournaments are necessarily contained in tournaments with large uh, chromatic number, OK? Um, and actually, uh, what yeah. What do you mean by transitive set? Ah, mm -hmm. transitive set is a uh, is a subset of vertices vertex set inducing acyclic uh, tournament. So, uh, yeah, basically this, this is a vertex set subset of vertex set, and you can order verti uh, vertices in a line such that uh, every edge goes in in one direction. So you can, uh, yeah, say. Every edge goes like from left to right, okay? Like this. Mm. So it doesn't contain. Uh, it doesn't contain any cycle, right? You can see. Well, isn't it easier to say that if you have an edge from x to y and y to g, then you have ah, to yeah. from x to g? Right? Yeah. Yes. So, yeah, if you have x, y, and z, then x should go to z. Uh, so, and there is the same question for graphs. So, question. Uh, which graph are necessarily contained in graphs? with large chi, large chromatic number. Uh, here, we denote the chromatic number by chi t. Mm. Chi is chromatic number. And uh, here, chi is for undirected graph. Uh, uh, here, uh, containment relation is an induced subgraph. So, and or, in other words, uh, you can ask, for which graph G does there exist C 
such that every graph excluding G has chi and most C. Yeah, they are yeah, equivalent questions. So for example, one vertex graph. Every graph doesn't contain it, it's just empty graph. So its chromatin number is zero. And another example. And now you're talking about chromatic number of graphs or chromatic number of direct graphs. It's an undirected graph, right? Undirected graph. Oh, yeah, yeah, here, yeah. Hmm. Mm, yeah, here, uh, every graph is undirected graph, yeah. And another example is an edge graph. So every graph doesn't contain it, has no edges, so its chromatic number is just one, right? Uh, what else? Okay, actually, actually they are all the graphs satisfying this condition. Uh, uh, let me show the proof. It's, it's not uh, hard. So, say this uh, this property star G says by says uh, star if G says by star star then G is a complete yeah G must be a complete graph because just take I suppose G is not complete. Then just take k c plus one. <laughs> yeah, a complete graph with uh, c plus one vertex, vertex. It doesn't contain g if g is not a complete graph. Then it doesn't contain g as an induced subgraph, but its chromatin number is bigger than c. So g must be a complete graph. And also, g is a full rest. Yeah, it is not obvious. Uh, suppose G is not a forest, suppose not, then G contains some cycle. Cycle, say it's length, cycle of length L. Okay. And we know that there exists a graph, some graph, say H, with uh, girls bigger than L and chromatic number bigger than C. This is uh, Erdos theorem. Uh, uh, we can take a graph with arbitrarily large girls and arbitrarily large chromatic number. So we know that uh, we can take we can yeah take such a graph H. Then H doesn't contain G as an induced subgraph, and H has uh, large chromatic number, so it's a contradiction. So, yeah, G must be a forest. So if G has uh, any three vertices, then because of this, G contains dirty cycle. Okay, then G is not a forest. So G should have at most two, two vertices. Okay. And so we reach this conclusion. Yeah. So this question actually uh, solved, easily solved. Then what if we exclude many graphs in, instead of just ex excluding only one graph? So say H set of graphs. Then we have another question, uh, which H uh, for which H does there exist to C such that every graph G 
uh, every ref not containing H for uh, any member of has chromatic number bounded by C. Yeah, this is another question. <coughs> um, yeah, here H can be infinite, but in this talk, I'm, I'm not going to talk about infinite set. I want to just talk about finite. Because their approaches are different, so here we assume that just H is finite. And then we can say the si similar things. H should contain some complete graph, okay? Because of the same region. Also, H contains forest, is forest, some forest. Yeah, proof is uh, yeah almost the same with this. Um, then what else? What H should contain? Mm, yeah, we don't know that. Well, there, there is a nice conjecture raised by Schwarzfasch in 1971 and Sumner uh, let me check no, 75 and 1981 they conjecture that so say this is star prime H satisfies star prime if and only if H contains K N and F of forest. Yeah, F is forest here. So they conjecture conjecture that these two are yeah, sufficient. Uh, this is still open, but there is some uh, partial result. So H contains. One complete graph and at least one forest. Ah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. For some, for some complete graph K N and some forest F. Yeah. Um, and there are some partial results for this. Uh, so this direction is easy. Yeah. If H satisfy that then it must contain complete graph and some forest. It's easy. But it is open. And in 1985, Jualfashi proved this direction is true when F is a uh, path. Yeah. He proved that yeah, this is true for every path. And in 1994, Kirstead, Kirstead, and Penn Wright show that this is true when f is a uh, tree with radius 2. Yeah, radius 2 means that there exists uh, some vertex v such that uh, e every other vertex is a neighbor of v or the second neighbor of v. Yeah. And in 1997, uh, Scott, Alex Scott, of this uh, direction, but he used another containment relation. So he proved that for given complete graph and full rest, uh, there exists some C such that every 
graph excluding k and and uh, a subdivision of of f has chromatic number bounded by c. Yeah. So it, uh, yeah. So this is a weaker version of this uh, direction. If you consider infinite set, then yeah, there are some results uh, for about this question. About I'm not cover them here. Uh, so back to the tournament. Now mm, we also have similar questions for tournament. So which tournament? Story in tournament. Yeah. Uh, actually, there is a nice definition for this uh, such a tournament, and I'm gonna define it yeah, first. Uh, for tournaments T and H. We say T is H free if uh, T doesn't contain H, so no no sub tournament of T is isomorphic to H and. Let uh, H be a set of tournaments. Uh, we say T is H free if uh, yeah, T is H free for every member H. these two definitions and we say H is heroic if uh, there exists some C such that every H free tournament uh, as chromatic number bound is by C. So, uh, so yeah, the Horex set satisfies this condition. Yeah, for yeah, for tournament. Mm. Uh, So, any question so far? Yes. Um, just as a silly question. Hmm? Oh, why is the word heroic? Uh, uh, yeah, to be honest, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> just, yeah. Actually, there is, there is a paper for uh, this tournament, and they just named it. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so here, yeah, there is another yeah, definition here. So if H contains only one tournament, say H is, has one tournament H, then we say H is a hero. Yeah. And every hero is completely characterized.
in 2006, uh, 2012, Ali uh, Burger, Chudnowski, Kormanski, Level, Joko Fox, Paul Seymour, uh, Alex Scott, Stefan Massen. Yeah. yeah, these eight authors characterized yeah, all uh, heroes. So they prove that H is a hero if and only if every strong component of H is a hero. So if uh, every tournament can be uh, part can be decomp decomposed into a uh, strong component. So you have H here, and actually you can decompose it into a uh, strong component. And if they are heroes, then H is a hero. You know that. A uh, strong component? A yeah. uh, strong component is a maximal sub tournament inducing strongly connected tournament. Okay, so for undirected graph, we have a uh, connected component. So strong component is yeah, similar. Can you explain strongly connected? Because maybe something. Ah, like yeah, strongly connected. So autonomous is strongly connected. Uh, if autonomous is, uh, is strongly connected, then for every pair of vertices U and V, there, uh, there is exist two paths from U to V and from V to U. Yeah, both paths. So U and V here. Then you have path from U to V, and you have path from V to U. And th in this case, we call tournament strongly connected. Yeah. For example, uh, yeah, this one, transit tournament is not strongly connected, right? So average goes from left to right, so there is no path from here to there. Yeah? Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, come on. Now, suppose H is, uh, is totally connected. So if H is totally connected, then you can't decomp decompose it into a uh, smaller uh, strong component. So uh, we need another uh, theorem, and this says that if H is strongly connected, uh, then H is a hero, hero if and only if H is isomorphic to uh, LK H prime or H prime LK. Okay, let me let me yeah, explain. Describe these two tournaments. So here, LK is transitive tournament. Transitive tournament with K vertices, and H prime is just a hero. Okay, and for uh, for tournaments A, P, and C, delta. A, P, C is a tournament obtained from directed triangle, say each vertex U, V, W, by substituting A, P, C for yeah, U, V, W. Ah, here, this is uh, just one, a uh, one vertex tournament. Uh, so every strongly connected hero can be decomposed into at uh, these three uh, small uh, tournaments. So like this, you have one vertex here, and you have transitive tournament here, and you have. Uh, 
another he hero here. And every vertex, uh, every vertex here goes to every vertex in, in H prime, and like this. Or if you uh, have a hero, then you can make a bigger hero by using this operation. Must have some exceptions, right? When h is too small, you can never write h as the position of three. Oh, you mean? What do you mean? Uh, okay. So h should, should be strongly connected. Oh, oh, I see. Yeah. But then, how is h prime <laughs> a hero? Uh, oh, but h prime could be. It does. Yeah, it doesn't need to be strongly connected. Yeah. So you can start. Yeah, you, so you can start with single vertex. Uh -huh. Then you get uh, the this is a hero by taking uh, k equals one. Yeah. So yeah, they characterized all heroes. Uh, then what can you say about just general? Is Horowitz set. Ah, uh, yeah, general finite Horowitz set. Yeah, I want to avoid infinite Horowitz set. And what can I say about a uh, finite Horowitz set? Actually, uh, I really have no idea about that. So for for undirected graphs, there is a nice conjecture, Jeff and some conjecture. They uh, conjecture that yeah, uh, it must contain some complete graph and some forest. But even we don't have uh, such a nice conjecture for general Horowitz set. So, so we try to figure out then what is Horowitz set of size 2? So they characterize all Horowitz set of size 1. Then what is the Horowitz set of size 2? Okay. So yeah, we were interested in this set. But yeah, we couldn't. It couldn't characterize all the horizon of size two. But we found some uh, some nice uh, necessary condition. And that is main theorem of this talk. But uh, before stating the main theorem, we need to uh, define some tournament classes. Uh, yeah. Hmm? Is it okay? <laughs> okay. Uh, the first class is a D, and it contains some uh, tournament D1. This is a one, thing, one vertex tournament, and Tn is delta 1 Tn minus 1, Tn minus 1. Yeah, here we proved what delta is. So, uh, T2 is 1, 1, 1. Oh, you get a cyclic triangle. And T3, you start with one vertex here. You have T2 here, so cyclic triangle. Here you have a cyclic triangle. We have edges like this, and so we can you can construct d n from d n minus one. Yes. Uh, and we say d is a of tournament. contained in t n for some d for some n. Yeah, we define d as this. And there is another tournament class, say, say A. Mm, okay. U1 is just one vertex tournament. And Un is a tournament with 
two two n minus one vertices. Say v one v two v two n minus one. And as you said, if mm, okay. So yeah, we have an um, ordering here. Ordering of vertices v one v two v two n minus two v two n minus one. So to describe this tournament, actually we uh, only need to identify all edges from right to left. So edges from right, left to right, is, uh, we call it forward. This direction is forward. And we call this direction backward. And to define this tournament, we only need to identify backward edges here, right? It uniquely uh, uh, decide the tournament. And we say this edge is backward edge. So, instead of defining the edge set, I'm going to define uh, backward edges. So, backward edges. is v i v j bar i and j are odd and i is bigger than j uh, so it means that uh, you, ha uh, you have order here and every edge incident with two odd vertices uh, is backward for example, v2 is just, we have v1, v2, v3, and only this edge is backward. And u3, you have five vertices, v1, v2, v3, v4, v5, and these three edges are backward. And any, any other edges, edge is just forward. Okay. This is the un. An is another another tournament obtained from U N. By substituting A N minus one for uh, ah yeah A N minus one for every even vertex. So even vertex is just v, like v2, v4, v2n minus 2. OK, so this is the example. A1 is just uh, one vertex tournament. And A2 is obtained from u2. So we have basically triangle. By substituting this vertex, uh, replacing this vert vertex with just uh, one vertex, A1. And A3 is obtained from U3 by substituting uh, A2 for these two even vertices. Okay? So we, get, we can construct AN in, in the way. And a is the set of tournament contained in A n for some n. Uh, these two classes have very nice property. This position uh, trivially. D and A are closed on the subtournament. Uh, closed. Yeah, this is the first property. 
and also both have have ah uh, is up both have unbounded chromatic number, which means that uh, each set contains tournament with arbitrarily large chromatic number. Actually, uh, chromatic number of dn is n, and chromatic number of a n equals n. Yeah. So uh, from these two observations, we have. Can I ask something? So yeah. a n and dn. This is a specific graph, right? Yes. Yes. And then you say set of tournaments contained in there, you mean any sub tournament? Uh, yes. Any, any sub tournament of AM? Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Ah, oh, sorry. Hmm. Yeah. So A is infinite set, right? Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. A and D are infinite sets, so. Uh, so there is a nice theorem that if H is heroic, then H meets uh, T and A. Which means that H, ho every heroic set should contain some member of D and some member of A. Uh, this just because A is not a subset of D? Or? No, they are totally different set. Uh, I mean, the proof could be... Uh, pr uh, the proof? Uh, yeah, yeah. So, let me show the proof. Aren't the arcs uh, A2 and D2 the same? Yeah, they're not. Totally different. Uh, uh, D1 and D1. Yeah, D1 and A1 are the same. A D2 and... <laughs> <A. laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, they sh share some uh, tournaments, but finite number of tournament. They share just a final number of uh, tournaments. Yeah. So by meeting, you mean uh, H contains at least one member of D and one member of A? Yes, right? yes, yes. Their, in their intersection is not empty. So proof is, yeah, suppose H intersecting D is empty, yeah, or A here, then, uh, then it means that every member of D uh, is H free, right? If D contains a member of H, then it must be a, a member of D because D is close on the subtournament. Okay? Then we just take. D C plus one. Yeah, this one D C plus one. Then D C plus one is H free. Oh uh, here. Uh, I see we defined uh somewhere here. Uh yeah, yeah. Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry for that. Uh. Now because H is a, a heroic set, there, sh there, uh, is there is some C satisfying the condition, okay? We define C, C like this. C is here. Every H free tournament has chromatic number and most C. But uh, if we take D C plus one, it is H free, but it's chromatic number plus one equal to C. So it's a contradiction. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Um, and there is another class of tournaments. So for undirected graphs, we need a uh, complete graph and forest. And I think these two classes are corresponding to a complete graph. So there might be some, some tournaments corresponding to a forest, right? 
So I'm going to define something which is analogous to a forest. Say Uh, its definition is a, li a little bit uh, ugly. So, um, yeah, I just I just said its, it's definition. Mm. So for uh, uh, for a ton of the T and sigma is ordering of V T. And we say sigma is a uh, yeah. we say sigma is a forest ordering if and only if either um ah. Let me define uh, another stuff first. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, again, T is a tournament. And sigma is a ordering. Of VT. The, uh, if tournament 10 is vertex ordering are given, then um, each backwards are fixed, right? So you have v1, v2, v and here, and we only consider its backward edges. We remove every forward edges, okay? And we remove this, this. And also we remove its direction. Their, their, their directions. And we call this graph a back edge graph. So the back edge graph, say B sigma T, yeah, under sigma, is a graph with vertex is just vt, the same vertex set, and e is a back word edges. So if you have this tournament, then each backward edge is this. We just take backward edges, okay? And here, uh, sigma is a forest ordering if and only if either its backward, uh, its back edge graph is independent, uh, has no edges, or um, they are on uh, there exist I such that no two edges of B sigma T between V I and Vn are in the same component of P sigma t, and yeah, there's another condition, uh, and uh, the, the ordering induced by this set, so this set is v1. This set is V2, 
then the ordering induced by this set and the ordering induced by this set are also first orderings. So sigma v1 and sigma v2 are first orderings, orderings of t v1 and t v2. Uh, yeah. So you, uh, you, you can uh, decompose this tournament in, into small uh, first orderings, this ordering, yeah. And uh, does it mean the hmm? case that the first one is contained in the second case, or mm, actually yes, yeah. Uh, actually, the first case is just some base case. Uh. Yeah, so you don't need to define. Uh, in the very, uh, you just start. You can start with just v sigma t has only one vertex, something like that. Well, yeah. And this is definition: t is a forest tournament if t has. Of forest ordering. Mm, this is the definition. And like DNA, oh uh, yeah, uh, like DNA, this tonum test, some, some property, so proposition. Uh, Every forest ordering, a uh, forest tournament has chromatic number at most two. And if it's a forest, for, for a forest tournament F and is forest ordering sigma. The back edge graph is a forest. So this is a reason. This is a reason why we call this tournament a forest tournament. Is that an alternative definition? I'm sorry. Could you use that as the definition? Just the backwards edge graph of the force. Uh, you mean this definition? Yeah, can you replace uh, the second statement of that proposition? Oh, uh, yeah, 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 it's yeah, yeah, it's proposition. For, for first tonal <coughs> F and its first ordering sigma, yeah, B sigma F is forest. This is proposition. So, so, so I'm, I'm just pointing out that that statement is very simple. Whereas your, your definition there is very long. Are these cells equivalent? Ah, yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, yes. Then for some ordering, then is it true that? Uh, uh, yes, that's right. Yeah. If if this is true, then no. Ah, uh, maybe not. Yeah, for example. You have this baggage graph, then every cut doesn't satisfy this condition. Every cut you have uh, and its two edges, but they are contained in the same component. Right? Right. Uh, but that, but you're writing the baggages or yeah, baggages. baggages. But there could be the, uh, some other order. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, this is not a first ordering, so, yeah. yeah. Anyway, yeah, we, uh, we, <laughs> we define first tournament in that way, and, and after that, you can prove that every first tournament, uh, it has a, it's the word, uh, package graph is forest, and so it's, it's a first 
its chromatin number is almost two. Yeah. So the converse of the second proposition, second proposition is mm -hmm. probably false, but we don't know the count example. Maybe. Hmm? Oh no no no! This is true. No, the converse. Converse. Oh, yes, that's what he was asking. Ah uh, yeah 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 yeah. That, right. yeah. Say so H is a finite Hollow set. Then H contains a forest tournament. Here finite is very important here. You can't remove finite here. Because say H let H be the set of a tournament with uh, with chromatin number three, then it is infinite Hollow set, right? Right? Yeah, in the case C is bounded by three, but it doesn't contain a forest tournament because every forest tournament has chromatin number almost two. So here, finite is very important. Of this proposition and part two, can't you just order it so that one of the leaves is the first vertex of the contents? Would you satisfy? Wouldn't your cups be at the first vertex? Yeah, but I mm -hmm. don't know. We don't know whether. Mm. Oh, you because what's left is also a forest, right? You're just picking off a leaf. Uh, I don't understand what. Do you mean? No, uh, he's thinking of the converse of the the second part. There exists some process. ordering so that. Uh, Ah, uh, this one? Or this one? Yeah. From there to prove. Uh, from there to... Uh, well, Brandon uh, from, from what Brandon suggests is, is there a simpler definition? Yeah. Uh, a definition for forest tournament instead of making uh, this complicated definition and proving this nice statement. Ah... Uh, anyway. Uh, yeah, yeah. Maybe, maybe there might be some, yeah. Simple way to. Thinking of putting leaf at the first place, something first like location, that. and they cut it right after the leaf, right? Yeah. Uh, wouldn't that be such an order? Okay, let's discuss it after <laughs> <Yeah>. this. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. So now we have three tournament classes A, T, and F. Hmm. Now we are almost ready to state uh, our main theorem. Uh, there's another definition. So for tournament T, Ft is the set of all tournament, all T-free tournament. <coughs> then, uh, is heroic if and only if H1 is a hero for F H2. Is it right? Yeah, H1 comma H2 is a heroic if and only if H1 is a hero for yeah if you consider only this this tournament then H1 is a hero. And now we know that uh, this set contains a member of D. Right? So this uh, <coughs> this is the term. For a tournament T, what are heroes for Ft. Okay. So to characterize all heroic sets with size 2, we only need to answer for this question. But we know that uh, heroic set contains a member of D. So we need to consider for D in large, large D. 
or Ft. Right? And if there is a lemma that the intersection A and the intersection F is the set of all heroes. So if here D is a member of A or D is a member of D, then every tournament is a hero for FD. There's not an interesting case. Okay. Because, uh, yeah, because D is also a member of A, then this class has bounded chromatic number. So every, every tournament can be a hero for FD. So we may assume that for T in T minus A F but heroes. If you, you can give an answer for this question, then yeah, actually you uh, characterize uh, all horizons of size two. Um, I don't know the. So this is the. I the thing is, you choose H two as the one that is in, in D, right? Uh yes, yes. Because you can you can assume that one of the H one and H two hmm? must be a member of D. Yeah. Yeah. So we need to consider only this case, and because of this lemma, uh, yeah. Also, we may assume that this is not a member of A or F. Okay. So the answer of this question is exactly the same as the characterization of whole set of size 2. Uh, okay. I don't know the answer, but I have some uh, self condition. Now we have some list. Let's see what I And these are uh, member of D minus a union F and say A uh, H is a, H is tournament and for it, H is a hero for F D if not if and only if if every strong component strong of H is a hero. And the second, now we assume H is strongly connected. Then H is a uh, hero for FD if H is isomorphic. Uh, oh, no, no, no. If H is a hero for A, F, T, then H is isomorphic to one of the following in the list. If I will do one for this tournament, triangle, and U3 and U4. We define this tournament there. Uh, this is and two, basically triangle, and K1 and H prime, delta. Or,
And these L are uh, transitive tournaments. the last Whew. yeah so we have this list and what is UK oh, oh this is how you replace the vertices on the yes yes you're right just we replace oh where is you oh uh, 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 yeah so say you three say a, B, C, D, E is a tournament obtained from U3, mm. replacing every, verte ver every vertex with A, B, C, D, E. Mm. Okay. Uh, so this is our theorem, and we don't know it's converse, but we proved that some of the converse, so we proved that this if and only if. And here, them, and mm, and we don't know about other tournaments. So it means that if H is a hero, then it must be one of the following. But we don't know the converse. But <laughs> these yellow tournaments, we know that these yellow tournaments are uh, yeah, hero for FD. And so I'm going to finish my talk with just one question. The simplest case, uh, the simplest case. So U4 and the uh, the minimum tournament contained in this set. This tournament is the minimum tournament contained in this class. And U4 is here. So is this set a hurry? Yeah, we don't know yet about this question. OK, that's it. So is there any question?